Hey what's up guys, it's Isaiah here and this is my unboxing and review of the Oppo Reno2. I also have the Reno2 F video coming out right after this video so make sure you hit that link in the description and you subscribe and you have notifications turned on for when that drops in a couple of hours. I've had the Reno2 for quite a while, I've been using it as my sort of daily driver for over a month now and it's one of the few devices I actually enjoyed using. I'll share all the positives and negatives of using it and as always I'll have my timestamps in the description and pinned comments of this video so you can skip ahead to sections of this review that you need quick information about. Alright, I'll shut up now and without further Further ado, let's get to the video. Straight to the unboxing of the Renault 2, first things first, it's a really long box and you see why in a bit. You get the illustrated back of the device and every branded label on the box has a bit of a gradient tint to it, just to fit a certain aesthetic. When you open the box, you've got a smaller box that houses a safety guide and a quick guide for setting up. Underneath that is the device itself and a wrap that's just taking up a certain percentage of the box. We're here to see why the box is tall and we'll just keep the phone to the side for now. When we take the hard paper material, we get the upper leather case which feels very very cool cool i like the leather material as well and now for the reason why the box is tall it's the presentation of the accessories there's a semi gigantic charging adapter and this adapter is a 20 watt vuk 3.0 flash charge fast charger we get a thick charging cable and the same ejector tool right underneath it lastly we get the headphones with green accents in the ear tip section and it's packaged in a special mini box and that's the reason why the box is tall um i have to hand it to oppo you know with the packaging they did a good job anyway that's all we get in the box and we'll get to the device meet the Renault 2. on the front we get all the features that oppo deems as more important we get 48 megapixel quad cameras five times hybrid zoom steady mode the 6.5 inch amoled display vuk 3.0 fast charging and of course the 8 gigabyte ram and 256 gigabyte storage when you take the wrap off the device we of course get the device with that flush gorilla glass 6 panel up front with an added screen protector and on the back when you take the sticker off it's this flush ocean blue finish with the oppo branding and cameras for quick note the reno 2f which is the younger sibling is a gorilla glass 5 on both the front and the back the right side of the reno 2 has the hybrid or shared sim slot you can either use dual nano sims and not have a space for a micro sd card or use one nano sim and have space for at most a 256 gigabyte sd card a micro sd card beneath the sim slot is the power button with a green accent which looks just nice and an antenna line above the antenna line continues to the left side and that's also where we've got the volume records which sort of have their own bowl if you will the bottom of the Renault 2 has the headphone jack Thank you for keeping it oppo <laughs> then we get the microphone usb-c port and the speaker grill alongside uh, another antenna line on that flat surface in that oppo aesthetic also at about 9.5 millimeters thick the Renault 2 is pretty sleek and it stands on its own the back of the Renault 2 has the quad camera setup including a 48 megapixel sensor you, you get a hybrid zoom feature which goes up to 20 times of zoom basically from the top to the bottom we get a 48 megapixel camera we get an 8 megapixel ultra wide camera 10 megapixel telephoto which helps us zoom and a 2 megapixel black and white sensor which would help for um, depth and silhouette like shots the render 2 also shoots at 4k beside the camera is a dual led flash beneath that is a tiny microphone and this half ball oh and by the way the camera sensors are flush to the back uh, i mentioned the front display is a gorilla glass 6 well the back is a gorilla glass 5 and the camera is just underneath that protection i don't know how we did this but it's just lovely to see anyway back to that ball or half ball as i was talking about well that ball sort of helps um, lift the device up a bit and serve as a further help with the camera sensors not to get scratched when it's placed on a flat surface. The device is curved and would definitely rock on a table and that's okay but hey, um, I use this device with a leather case ultra my usage. I didn't really feel the effect of any flat thing or the half ball and by the way the case that comes with Renault 2 protects it quite well. Um, you can place the device face down without worrying about scratches since it's got slightly raised edges on the four corners to keep it from having much contact with the flat surface when it's placed that way. Beneath all that is the Oppo branding and the design for Renault badge. The top of the Renault 2 has a microphone embedded in that pop-up camera and the earpiece. Yes, um, the earpiece is literally in the pop-up camera and you see that when you lift it up. Of course, you get a 16 megapixel f2.0 motorized pop-up camera but tucked away in there is just the earpiece and it also has fall detection so the pop-up camera goes back in if a fall is detected well you notice there's no fingerprint reader anywhere on the body of this device and that's because we've got an optical fingerprint reader 
um, under the display which basically just shines a light on your hand and it works even with the screen protector applied color options for the device are ocean blue which is what we have here and luminous black both variants are of the gradient kind and it looks very interesting the front of the Renault 2 has a screen protector as I mentioned which is a pretty nice addition something we've seen in many recent mid-rangers and in fact this is even coupled with the fact that we have a gorilla glass 6 screen on the front I think I've said gorilla glass like four times now overall the weight dissipation for the Renault 2 and the Renault 2 F are slightly apart um, the Renault 2 F is slightly heavier than the Renault 2 which weighs 192 grams compared to 197 grams on the Renault 2 F they both have 4000 milliamp hour batteries and from my own inference I'd say it's just a slight body variation since they are both 6.5 inch devices it took 1 minute and 30 seconds to set up the Renault 2 with the fingerprint applied and we're ushered into color OS 6.1 now you may not be able to tell quickly that the Renault 2 is an AMOLED display it's a 6.5 inch AMOLED display 1080 by 2400 20 by 9 aspect ratio with a decently large 401 ppi of course protected by the Gorilla Glass 6 thankfully there is no notch on this phone to hinder the display again just like my oppo f11 pro which i reviewed way earlier i really like the aesthetic of the oppo renault 2 the oppo devices recently and the renault 2f no notch different pop-up camera styles you also get auto brightness with the help of the ambient sensor you can also adjust the screen temperature to cool or warm depending on what you want and there's even a mode for colors in screen color mode here you can make it gentle or vivid and i could tell the difference it's on vivid and i'll suggest you leave it on vivid you also get to adjust the front display sizes text sizes word boxes the same thing with the new color os 6 device you get the drawer mode and the standard mode i mentioned this in my oppo a9 2020 review which i made just not too long ago and it basically means that um, in the standard mode there's no app drawer apps are only seen horizontally from the home screen or via search while in the drawer mode apps are both seen in the horizontal screen but also in an actual app drawer for this drawer mode that you can check out via shortcut initials i kind of prefer the drawer mode you also get to change your app layout from 5x6 to 4x6 and watch what happens when you try to move the ui elements around it moves in a cute way i kind of stumbled upon this by accident and i play with it occasionally okay moving on <laughs> one thing you don't see in many smartphones are the customizability of the do not disturb mode and on here you can easily work that out you can schedule time that you don't want to be called say you have lectures this is a good fit for you or you work somewhere and you don't want any interruption at a certain time or maybe you've got a meeting and this could definitely come in handy you get to customize the notification times messages you can just allow who calls you and in a semi-formal setting you can definitely allow options for ringing after repeated calls. Native screen recording comes with the smart sidebar that you can pull when you're watching a video or you're gaming and you can also take that screenshot and switch to a setting app. You can also take screenshots when you press the power button and volume down button. Doing this with the volume up button is for putting your phone in vibrate mode. Split screen is also very similar to Color OS 6 devices and once you're in a compatible app, you can jump into multitasking mode. You can then tap on it and it pre-selects capable apps that would work in this half split 50 50 screen mode the notification slash control center has some of what you will need and when you swipe down again you get up to 16 icons you can click the icon be beside the gear icon or the settings icon and you get another set of 16 icons that you can drag and drop so there's many nifty features in there viewing videos on the amulet panel of the Renault 2 was very immersive because there's no notch nothing distracts you from what you're watching in fact you can even stream hdr videos from youtube in full hd and it also did look immersive but you can't stream 1440p or capped at 1080p which is okay also about the display one thing you will notice is that the Renault 2's bottom bezel is noticeably smaller than the Renault 2 f's now among the control center icons is a feature called dolby atmos which if you're familiar with movies you probably know what it is well i'll be coming to that in a very short time we don't have a stereo speaker set on here and when you're watching videos you can easily block the speaker and cut off almost 80 percent of the sound However, we've got three microphones on this guy at the back, the bottom, and of course the top. And there is one that is dedicated to active noise cancellation, which is cool. Anyway, I did a quick test to know how the microphone and the speaker sounds. Here is how they perform. This is the sound quality test of the Oppo Reno 2. I'm holding it the same way I would hold it when I'm making a phone call. Do let me know what you think about the microphone's quality in the comment section below.
speaker did lag bass and it was fairly thin and punchy but it was loud um, the microphone was just awesome in my opinion and i didn't have any complaints about it one thing i liked and it's a very small thing um is that the render 2 has this fade in and fade out effect when you play and pause music I'm a music lover and small things like this just make me appreciate the overall experience more. Shout out to Color Over 6. And when I used the Renault 2 for calls, it did sound very clear. I didn't have any qualms with using it. The Dolby Atmos feature comes on when you plug in headphones. And for me, this is a pretty big deal because I've not really trusted much Android devices with my car's aux, you know, when it's on there. I could really hear the surround sound being separated from left to right. Same thing with using monitor headphones. It just gets better and it's pretty cool for me. The pop-up camera makes some sounds that you may or may not want to keep. Um, you can select between no sound, technology, mechanical, and musical. The Renault 2 comes with the Snapdragon 730G, which is a 15% graphics boost update from the regular 730, and it's an 8nm chipset, uh, octa core chipset. Of course, you get the average clock speed of 2 GHz, and you have the Adreno 618 GPU. Using this device felt snappy, and it's easy among one of my top Android experiences. The one I've got with me is an 8GB RAM and 256GB storage version, and um, you can expand it by 256GB on the microSD card, so you get a total of 512GB. There's a second version with a lesser 128GB, but this goes for the price of 179k or $180,000 or $500 and you get my verdict at the end of this video. I also like that Oppo is pretty big on security with this device. A lot of apps I opened had its own firewall before allowing permissions. It's nothing major but it makes me just feel safer using this device and I wanted to stick to it more. However, there is no IP rating for this guy, no water or dust resistance because it's got a moving part in the front camera, in that pop-up camera, um, yeah. When it comes to gaming, the default graphics was set to high for PUBG. You know, it's a pretty high density display, um, AMOLED display. There were no lags on my end and you get the typical 5% battery loss for mid-range devices. Basically, after 30 minutes of gaming, battery dips by 5%. You still have game space which optimizes gaming and blocks calls from entering, among other useful things. What I like about gameplay though is that it's very immersive with that bezel-less display. Overall, battery life was actually good for me and my overall usage. It's a 4000mAh battery and it worked better for most days and I always had, I could keep it to the evening sometimes. But heavy use made it shorter and it could go for like 6 hours. You can also do OTG, transfer files between devices and charge another device. The Renault 2 comes with a 20 watt charger and as I mentioned earlier, the battery charges pretty fast. It gets from 0 to 100% in 1 hour and 36 minutes and here is the breakdown. In 30 minutes it goes from 0 to 47%, in another 30 minutes it goes from 47 to 80%. So yes, in 1 hour your battery charges from 0 to 80 percent and then we move further we get 80 to 98 percent in another 30 minutes and then 98 percent 100 percent in approximately six minutes it's one of the faster charging speeds i've seen fingerprint works with the screen protector as i mentioned it's an optical sensor which basically flashes lights and captures that data and it's not something fancy like an ultrasonic uh, fingerprint scanner you may have to press and hold quite a bit longer to unlock the device and you also get face unlock which you know the shark fin pops up takes it picture of your face and something like that i was more into the fingerprint side of things and of course we get bluetooth 5.0 while the Renault 2 f has bluetooth 4.2 so you can easily connect multiple bluetooth um, devices you can share audio but you can't do that on the Renault 2 f as with the new color os 6 devices that we have oppo maintains simplicity with their cameras you get video photo and portrait mode and this is a similar thread with the front facing camera as with the back camera you can select either 1x 2x 5x and go all the way up to 20 x and you get a few icons up top and the settings all the way to the left as far as the other options you get to choose the rest from the hamburger menu to the left with regards to the back camera you get options like night panorama expats and more while on the front camera the hamburger menu only gives us panorama mode time lapse and sticker mode for both modes whether you are on the front or the back camera you get options at the top of the settings it's from that settings that you will see that oppo reno 2 can shoot at the lowest resolution of 720p at 30 or 60 fps 1080p at 30 or 60 fps and 4k at only 30 fps and the camera has some sort of stabilization we'll check that out in a bit still in the settings for photos this is where you can change to 48 megapixel camera 
i'm not in the expert mode here you can change it in the photo ratio section and you select that you see the same 48 megapixel label it doesn't even matter which lens you're switched to even in 48 megapixel camera mode you still have access to ai features unlike some others i say that i'm not a huge fan of the portrait mode on the reno 2 because of the edge line that it has which is too defined it's not supposed to look like this <laughs> however selfie portraits looks much better the edges are not too defined and the smoothening effect is somewhat manageable indoor or normal selfies on the other hand are very sharp very detailed i like them a lot really and when you look at the normal shots you take versus the 48 megapixel shot you may not be able to tell the difference um, from afar but it only becomes so obvious when you zoom in 48 megapixel camera seems to have more quality in the colors retained and the regular sensor isn't as saturated as it is if you compare the 48 megapixel shots on the Renault 2 without the 2f i'd say there's quite a difference especially in texture if you look at the images in the 5x zoom in comparison with the Renault 2f you notice that there's a huge difference as the 2f tries to over sharpen things because it doesn't have a native telephoto lens like the Renault 2 has there's some form of texture to every shot you get and accuracy when it comes to the background blur not to be confused with portrait mode when you also look at buildings in the 48 megapixel camera versus normal ones the sky seems washed out in the normal settings and the 48 megapixel sensor brings out a lot of details i also like how natural the blur gets on the Renault 2 this shows in the skin tones as you've seen before and now in the plants either green or reds um it just pops and i like how it separates things once the sky and maybe buildings are identified the ai camera turns into a scene mode which translates into some very sharp imaging i like how it shades the sky while protecting the natural colors i also took this picture of a building with some sort of pattern and it just highlights the details so well i even tweeted about it when looking for the hierarchy in 1x 2x and you know other zoom levels i was quite impressed with the Renault 2. the ultra wide shot i took was you know quite wide compared to the 1x shot i took which was warmer however when you change the zoom levels it becomes cooler as you go 48 megapixel zooms are quite sharp and retain a lot of details and one thing to note about the 48 megapixel shots is that they are two times bigger than regular image resolutions at 3000 by 4000 compared to 6000 by 8000 and three times bigger in file size 2 to 3 megabytes compared to 9 to 10 megabytes of your 256 gigabyte storage if you want to zoom into text there's no problem from the ultra wide which still maintains a lot of quality the 1x lens the 2x lens 5x lens and in 20x lens is very legible and guys i want you to look closely at the screenshot of the 20x zoom i was very far away from the signboard and the ai camera still recognizes text in this range i think it was pretty cool when it comes to night mode on here in comparison to the normal shots you get i'd say that night mode is very worth it i like how it blends the colors normal shots have a little bit more exposure but the night mode keeps everything in check and retains quality while boosting the colors up in bits where you would notice discoloration with the ultra wide shots is at night these shots were taking just a few seconds apart and the result is this warmer and cooler default tint state then you can zoom in and you see color stays the same but the quality gets lesser and lesser you know the more you zoom and it becomes blurrier 4k video is a bit more saturated and the good side is that it's not too shaky pretty smooth if you ask me while in 1080p mode, colors pop less and there's a bit of shakiness. Hey, what's up guys? So this is the front facing camera video quality of the Oppo Reno 2. It's a 16 megapixel f2.0 sensor in that shark fin um, flip up front facing camera. Let me know what you guys think about the video quality as well as the sound quality. From what I can tell here, it's actually a little bit more balanced than some other cameras that I've tested, you know, at the background there. And it's not too harsh in terms of the color. And when you tap it, it darkens the image quite a bit. Um, a little bit harsher than some, but um, yeah, let me know what you guys think about this front facing camera's video quality as well as the sound quality again in the comment section below. All right, guys, so this is the front facing camera video quality of the Oppo Reno 2 and the Oppo Reno 2F. Let me know which one you prefer in the comment section. They are both 16 megapixel f2.0 cameras, they are both pop up cameras, just that the Reno 2 is a shark fin and the Oppo Reno 2F is just a regular pop up camera like what we had on the Oppo F11 Pro. And yeah, let me know what you think about the front facing camera's visual quality as well as the sound quality. From what I can tell, the exposure on the back of the Renault 2 is not as harsh as that of the Renault 2 F. But other than that, what do you guys think? That's pretty much it for my review of the Oppo Renault 2, guys. I personally have been using this device for quite a while um, this past month. And if I would recommend it, the answer would be a yes. 
has it got great features yes specification wise battery life charging speed heck the charging speed immersive display three microphones if i'm not mistaken and the fact that i could rely on this device is enough but for the price of 179,500 dollars uh for the features i recommend it if you have the budget did i miss something is there something that you wanted me to talk about that i didn't talk about please let me know in the comment section below and if you found this video useful please leave a like and don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon to turn on notifications so you'll be the first to know when i drop a new video the runner 2f is dropping shortly after this and also here are links to my social media that you can check out um thanks a lot for watching this one and i'll talk to you guys in the next one